Bravo. Three, two, one, action! It's not a new thing when you say massacre to South Africans. It's, it's a social political issue that we're currently dealing with at the moment. The Echelon window turned upside down all in a blink. For me it was that. You know it would be nice if we just grab a cutaway completely running across the bridge which we can I get put in a post somewhere. We we are we are a very socio political show. So our DNA of the show, our premise of the show is people in the last two seasons who were fighting for their land. So you fight for the land, which happens in our country, and then you get the land, and then you still have to fight. There's a lot of politics around it, there's a lot of processes that have to go through it, and when you fight for something, you have the hope once you've, you've achieved and you've won, you hope that things are gonna get better, and then things get worse. The, the episodes that illustrate the massacre and the protests are very important. I think they're paramount for our country because we, we are fully aware that right now there is a land issue and expropriation without compensation. I think, uh, yes, it, it will certainly trigger a lot of people uh, because as a country I still believe we're very much wounded and there are a lot of things that we haven't dealt with. But I also feel like in the same breath, it will also inspire people to take action. Well, Aubrey's headspace is going through lines and preparing for the scene. But I think because we're replicating history in that moment, it was important for me to make sure that moments that lead up to the massacre are very clean and clinically delivered by us as actors. For now has been grueling. Because it's such a meticulous exercise to shoot the massacre, right? You can't... For it to have impact on the viewer, we have to exert ourselves at 150%. Um, for Makwana, it's been... something that pulled her out of her bubble of comfort. You know, to be in that tax bracket means certain things are not in your... Con like in your front of consciousness. And it's been a whole shock that this is what happens to people below the poverty line, um, that their lives aren't worth much. Um, in, a, in a country like ours, so many years after freedom. What we try to do is to make it as relevant as possible to the current situations that people are uh, are exposed to in real life. So that's how we can only, you know, play it for them to know that their voices are heard. You know, we, we hear them. And we also hope that through the show, they will be heard even more. And the reality of it is that it's not new issues that people are fighting for. And what we are doing on estate is not like we're bringing a new issue. We're just putting a mirror on it and say, this is where we're at as a people, and this is what our people are still fighting for, and the unfairness of it. You know, the character overall, as Castro, obviously, in a moment of desperation, he wants to fix a particular situation and wants to fix a particular narrative. And all the events lead to this moment. But yeah, I think for me, it was very important that we play every beat leading up to that moment very clinically and very clean without fussing and mucking about as actors. Our job as production is to ensure that the vision that has been set out by the script writers as well as the director actually comes to life. You cannot just uh, make decisions right there on the floor. Everything needed to be guided by the director. Everyone, every department needed to be in synchronization for everything to read the same. On the day, I think it was 20 minutes in and out for everyone. That includes wardrobe and yeah, hair. Yeah, not to reverse. Yes. That includes makeup and hair. So it was quite, yeah, that was something else. I don't know how we achieved that. You had to be on your toes. True. Literally everyone you saw on that frame had to go past through the makeup room and the wardrobe department. Really what happens is that over and above that then on the day with our assistant directors, it's about then liaising with each of the departments to ensure that with every scene that's there, the order of the day, with all the components that are there, that we're all in sync 
and we're working together to be able to bring this, this massacre um, to life. This is obviously part of season three's big opening, right? Meaning that there's quite a couple of scenes that need to be achieved. Um, I think one of our biggest challenge, challenges was finishing our days, mm -hmm. making sure that all these scenes are completed because we went to this location for three days. Um, I think another thing is that, you know, what pe most people don't know is that you're shooting a story over three days, but that is happening in one day. Yeah. So the continuity of it all, you're going back there over three days, you have to make sure that the blood is where you left it yesterday. <laughs> that the person is laying in exactly the same spot as you left them yesterday. So I, I would say the biggest challenge was trying to shoot everything out and making sure that the continuity made sense. I mean, I did a lot of research going into the massacre and it was quite a challenging experience. I mean, it's always a different experience having to shoot a lot of people. Obviously, without everyone being on board, you can't really get good picture. I mean, it's always good having to shoot with people that have the same energy that you have, so that obviously the outcome can be much better than having people that are just dragging feet. I guess that's what happened. <laughs> I would say the most challenging thing for me was obviously time. Mm -hmm. You invented something mm -hmm. and then you are only given like five minutes of what you dreamt in an hour dream and then you have five minutes to just execute it. The highlight, I don't wanna lie, I think it was towards the end where everyone was on the floor and some people were dead, some were limping out. It kind of like matched my vision and I was very fulfilled, I was like, this is beautiful. For me, it was the, the blood, uh, Makwena's being shot and the blood for me was like, will it come out, will it read correctly on the screen? No, because sometimes, you know, you see all these films and you can see they tried, but it didn't work. So my worry was that it must actually be, because that was the epic time where you really see blood flowing and it tells. So I was, that was my first one, I think. I'm going to be doing blood rigs. Um, the blood rigs are going to be used under the actor's clothes. So that it looks like blood is flowing from the wound underneath the clothes. It's going to make the clothes look like it's filling up with blood and um, so that just so it looks like an active open wound. What we normally do is we have what we call a blood rig. So a blood rig is normally just a piece of pipe that is attached to a bottle or a syringe with blood and then we once we squeeze the blood out of the bottle it will come through on the other end. As artists, I think we have the responsibility to keep reflecting history and keep reflecting the society that we want to live in. And the importance of this is not the question, it's how, as artists, we have the, the artistic integrity to tell these stories with truth and respect for the moment. We need to keep retelling such narratives so that we keep teaching current and future generations what to and what not to do. We're yet to even dip our toe into the pool of trauma as a country. Um, Marikana, for instance, we never got the full grueling understanding of what happened down there. So for us to see it on screen will likely be hard for a lot of people. Uh, people who have lived through things like the Sharpeville massacre, uh, you know, and, and seeing something like this, it could be very tricky. But I think the conversation around the trauma we've ex experienced as a people needs to start, right? Um, but we also just, we also need to start processing things. I think we, we've compartmentalized and never decompressed, never debriefed, never done any of that as a people, as a country. And you see it in our interactions with each other that we're such traumatized beings engaging each other on a daily basis that the more you don't engage those type of things the more we're building a bit of a hole for ourselves that in, a, in the most scary way we won't be able to get out of yeah I definitely think that it's good to just prompt us to stop talking here on our phones and being opinionated on social media and actually actively doing something about the changes that we would like to see happening around us.
Okay guys, what's next? 